Hey guys, Nathan Brandon Masters coming at you with R slash Glitch in the Matrix. Uh, I hope that the uh, noise outside doesn't bother you too much. They're mowing uh, lawns and they've been doing it all this morning. So hopefully it won't be too much of a problem. I am using uh, the Blue Yeti so I can change the pickup pattern. So I've changed it, changed it to a uh, cardioid pickup pattern. So uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh, and I finally did my Hexcraft Mechanics actual campaign video. So you can click on the card to go to it, or you can wait to the end of the video and uh, click on the link there. It'll show you, uh, you know, show you at the end. This is Hexcraft Mechanics issue two. This is written and drawn by me, and it's on Indiegogo right now. So uh, check that out when you have some time. The art you're looking at is uh, page three from Victor Lock Demon Hunter, Demon Noir issue two. This should be going up on Indiegogo in September. So keep an eye out for that. I've had a lot of fun with this because I noticed that in the comics, Victor doesn't use his martial arts a lot. So uh, it was fun uh, getting to uh, draw this. So let's jump into it guys. R slash glitch in the matrix. Starting with the first story, book duplication. Now, this is a duplication story, and what that means is when you find duplicates of items in your home uh, that you did not purchase. One time, I went on holiday to Spain. I spent ages agonizing over which two books of a series I would bring with me. I eventually decided and bought them along, and honestly didn't do much more than thumb through both of them on holiday. When we returned, the first thing I did was go to my bookshelf and return the books, only to find them there already. I pulled them out, compared them with the ones I had bought on holiday, and the copy ones were in better shape than the ones I had with me, which had general wear and tear of books I've kept for many years. I still don't understand how this happened. I'm not one for believing unproven things, but my mother's explanation that I just picked up the books on holiday, not bought them with me, doesn't make sense because I remember picking them out and having them with me on the flight to Spain. The childish part of my mind instantly went fairies are real when it happened because the books were about fairies, which is a funny conclusion in hindsight, especially since I was much beyond the age where that sounded reasonable. But for a good minute, I considered changing my tune. In the end, I gave the better quality new ones to my friend and kept the ones I'm calling the original ones. Everyone remembers the series of events fine, so I know I didn't somehow make it up. And that is duplication, one of the more well-known glitches in the Matrix. Uh, I think we've probably all experienced some type of, you know, maybe not duplication, but uh, some form of maybe an object not being where it's supposed to be. Duplication is very specific because it's so shocking. It's a physical manifestation of something and it's in your home and you don't know how it got there. That's what makes it very unsettling. And that is a variation of the object, uh, object not being where it's supposed to be uh, kind of experience. I think we've all experienced that. I can tell you off the top of my head, uh, the one experience I know for a fact was uh, I left home one time. I had my keys on me. I know I had my keys on me because there were certain things that I have to do, lock certain doors and things. So I know my key was on me. Uh, and I, you know, at some point I thought I had lost my keys because I didn't have them on me. Uh, I had to get back in. Luckily somebody was home. So uh, I got back in. My keys are sitting on the table in my room and it's like, Brock, you know, what, you know, what's really going on. So, if you had experiences like that, you know what to do. On to the next one. A voice in my head told me to, and uh, you guys know I, I like these kind of stories. In 2003, I was driving with my ex-wife and her mother's Ford Taurus. It was a normal winter day in Layden, Utah. We were heading east and down a small hill in the road. The lights we were approaching turned red. I had more than enough time to stop, so I eased on the brake. Slowly, the car started veering to the right, very casual-like. I panicked, though, because we were going to go straight through the intersection. There was a car stopped waiting to go north, and sure enough, like two magnets, I was being drawn right to it. 
So I stood on that brake and to no one's surprise, it did nothing. As I got closer and closer, I knew the impact wasn't going to be bad. Very minor fender bender, yet I was in full blown panic mode. I'm trying to twist the wheel thinking it would set the car straight. However, because I'm not thinking right, it's not penetrating my brain as to why. Suddenly, out of the middle of nowhere, a voice says in a clear authoritative voice, take your foot off the brake. Not questioning what I heard, I immediately jerked my foot off. Instantly, the car rights itself, pulling back into the center of the lane. After my brain realizes we are no longer in danger, I ask my ex how she knew to take my foot off the brake. She didn't know what I was talking about. And in fact, didn't even know we just avoided a car accident. I don't believe in God, but something was looking out for us that day. Maybe it was my own personal operator watching the code on the screen and decided to help me out. A lot of those close call stories. I, I, I For some reason, I just love those, what, what I would call guardian angel stories. Uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I just like those. This literally just happened. I was looking for my phone. I just had it in my hand 30 seconds before, but I sat it down to go put something away in my room. I came back to where I know my phone should have been, and it wasn't there. I looked under a plastic Ziploc bag, even though the bag was clear because I knew my phone was just there. I turned around and started looking elsewhere for maybe about 10 seconds. When I turned back around, my phone was on top of the Ziploc bag I had just lifted up and I looked under. I'm always being fricked with like this. Moments like this can make you feel really powerless and crazy if you let it. I just laughed it off. What else can you do? And uh, I guess that's, you know, when you really think about it, that's true because there are mental illnesses and things out there that will... Uh, you know, can make you hallucinate, even medicine and stuff that can uh, kind of mess with your mind. So, uh, yeah, I can see that. And in some of these glitches, uh, people actually do kind of say, hey, you might want to, uh, you know, get checked out because this could be a sign of a certain type of uh, mental issue. So uh, the next one, my glitch, conversation with the man that never was. So you're starting to see some commonality to some of these glitches. This happened to me many years ago when I was around 23. Was trespassing on some private land to reach a mountaintop. Legend has it, it was an old volcano. When I lived in the area as a child, as kids, we would see it as a great adventure to climb that hill. In those times, we never saw anyone climbing the hill, as we called it. And years later, I went back and thought I'd just climb it again. Up I went looking for familiar landmarks and in my walk met another climber that I knew only by association. So it was a brief hello, how are you, and then continued on my way. The clincher came many years later when I actually became friends with the climber from that day and I mentioned the time on the mountain and he said I have never climbed that mountain, was very adamant. This guy is not average looking, distinctive features, and on that day he recognized me. He doesn't drink or do drugs, kind of freaked me out. 30 years have passed and I stay off that mountain. Yeah, <laughs> that's my guy right there. He's like, nope, not doing it. All right, guys, my first real glitch and I'm irrationally sad. Now, uh, this one, it's going to be for, for uh, my Mandela Effect people. This is kind of along those lines. Today, after boiling water to clean with, I noticed that when I turned the stove off, the little red light that says the stove top is still hot also went off. I thought that was weird because the stove should definitely still be hot. So I looked closer and saw the red light now said burner off. I know it used to say something along the lines of surface hot because I always freaked out when I saw it on and worried I left the burners on until I would double check. We've only lived here a few months, so I was still getting used to the light. Anyway, now I'm wondering what happened. Did I die? If I did, I'm so sad for my husband and son. Did we all die? I don't remember anything that could have been a close call happening, really. 
when my husband's home from work tonight, I'll ask him about it to see what he thinks the light is for. I'm just sad that I'm in some dimension and people might be missing me. Are there other theories for these glitches? Quantum immortality is the only one I really know of. Edit to add, just texted my husband. I asked him what the burner light meant when it was on and he said, hot surface. So we're both having the same glitch. Wow, so she, she completely went with the idea that she's uh, in an alternate universe. Uh, I think that the universe is just like the, you know, it's just like the human body. There's so many things that have to go to keep the universe working the way it's supposed to work. And, you know, sometimes some of these things just get out of whack. They don't always work 100% the way they're supposed to. Or maybe it is working the way it's supposed to and we just don't necessarily think it's supposed to be working that way when uh, it actually is. All right, guys, last story. And this is going to be along the lines of the previous story, or at least the uh, OP kind of is in that same mindset. Dimensional shift, delete if not allowed. Please delete this if not allowed. I didn't know where to post. I read somewhere about the theory that when you have a near-death experience, you're then transferred to a nearby timeline that is mostly identical, but some things are slightly skewed. I think it was on here. Anyway, I recently was in a car accident where my wheel came off on the highway and I went flying into traffic. The car dropped on its rotor and slowed from 70 miles per hour to almost a stop very quickly. The last thing I saw and heard was a semi truck coming up behind me while blaring its horn. I realized that my time was at an end and I accepted it and braced for it. Then, nothing. I looked up and I was up against the divider, and traffic had built up behind me. No truck in sight. Anyway, fast forward and everything seems so off. People seem off. My girlfriend, who is usually the type that likes their space but admittedly was growing kind of distant, she's unaware of the accident, I didn't tell her, is suddenly in a very cheery mood all the time and kind of clingy, which is unlike her. Another thing I noticed is that while I always used to tease my friends and family and kind of troll them, they suddenly seem to get extremely irritated from just the silliest of my jokes, and they genuinely act as if I'm being serious. My mom even called out and said, what's up with you lately? You're always so serious and now you're talking smack all the time. I know it's nothing too crazy, but just something interesting I experienced. All right, guys, that's it. Those last two, a little bit unsettling if you actually start thinking about it. You know, what does happen if you're taken to an alternate dimension? What happens to the people in that other dimension? You know, do they miss you? Do they know you're gone? You know, what, what actually happens? All right, guys, so that's it. I need to get some work done back here. I'm going to jump into that. Uh, if I have time, I'll drop another one later on today you guys take it easy don't forget of course hexcraft mechanics 2 it's a 56 page urban fantasy action book written and drawn by yours truly it's off to a slow start so if you like this kind of material i'd love for you to go over there and show it some support try it out i think you'll love it i really do all right guys check you later Asta. don't look back we're here to stay a life we knew would come one day And this is it, the borderline To where the future leaves us behind The fire will burn and never die Looking through the eyes of a brand new life It's so